six knots and four knots of breeze. We're cooking. Oh! If I jump in, you'll see my hand. <laughs> okay. Just brought over the pillar extension here. <laughs> you know what? Look at this. can show this to the film uh, to the filmmaker. You can film anything that's people ever <laughs> Um, a class fund acceleration.
worry if we were. The boating world is divided into two camps, those who do it with sails and those who do it with engines. The sailing brigade spend most of their time tacking backwards and forwards and getting icy water in their wellies. The powered lot can of course point the boat in any direction and save the ice for the gin, which is fine if you can afford the gin and the huge fuel bill. But this boat will go anywhere in a straight line and it won't use an ounce of fuel. It's got a propeller that's driving it through the water, but the power comes entirely free. Not a brand new idea, but not many windmill-powered boats have made it past the drawing board. Although this 1870 attempt at the transatlantic crossing did get from England to Ireland. Windmill boats keep cropping up because, unlike other sailboats, they can sail directly into the wind. The power from the windmill is transferred via a gearbox at the top of the mast down a drive shaft to the underwater propeller. But to deliver maximum power, any windmill needs to be pointing directly into the wind. So what happens when you want to sail across the wind? Well, it's quite simple. You steer the boat. But you'll notice that the windmill starts slowing down and losing power. So that calls for a little adjustment. The whole mast is on bearing, so it's very easy to which the mast and the windmill around to make sure that it keeps pointing up into the wind. But you may not always want maximum power, so this rig has been made surprisingly controllable. Not only can you turn the windmill on or off the wind, it's also all to the pitch of the blades, that is the angle that they present to the wind, and therefore the amount of drive that they produce. OK, so it's hardly push-button control. This is an old car jack, but it works. even in a stiff breeze, it's easy to stop, either turn the boat or rotate the mast away from the wind. Traditionally, it might say that the extra weight of the gears and the propellers up at the top would make the boat unstable, but on a twin hull boat, that's not too bad. Mind you, it is a little bit hairy watching these blades skimming by at 100 miles an hour quite close to your head. I'd hate to see what happens if anything broke. And I certainly wouldn't advise anyone to go for a quiet stroll on deck. But the inventor of this believes that the theory, at least, could produce some amazing results. Because if you can sail directly into the wind, then your forward motion actually increases the speed of the apparent wind. And if your speed forward is increasing, then the wind is increasing. And if the wind's increasing, your speed can increase until, uh, well, who knows? Speed records are there for the taking. Mind you, I'm sure there's a catch in that theory somewhere. Oh, yes, the drag. Maybe that's why he's only reached five knots so far, but he's working on it. 